Hey boys and girls, welcome back to Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon. And in the last episode, we actually finally fought off with the Dark Pontifex, also known as Garneth, and we also freed Mars' sister, also known as Elise. And we actually, I didn't know this until the end of the episode, but apparently Elise was actually a playable character, which I didn't know. She's actually a curate, but honestly, I don't feel like going out and trying to, you know, try and get her to be usable. But we are going to keep her around in our inventory, but other than that, we're on our final hurdle into the final chapter. Because after this, we are going to be on the final chapter, which we will be finally fighting off with the Chaos Dragon, also known as Medius, or the Earth Dragon, whatever you want to call him. Honestly, I like call him the Chaos Dragon, since honestly, he's pretty scary based on what I've seen in the, um, what he becomes in the future. So, with that, let's do this. Into chapter 24, and I believe it's called the Dragonkin Realm. Let's do this. Oh no, I don't know what we're going to be dealing with soon. Dolor, a land veiled in mystery, the kingdom of Manakeets. Our story began with the revival of Medius, the Earth Dragon, here in this realm. The land of Arcnea has a long history of war, of tragic tales that are born and then fade. As time passes on, Medius' ambition of it for a world controlled by Manakeets is threatened. Marth and his army at last draw near to the end of their long march. And with that, we are finally on the doorstep of Dolor. Or actually, technically, technically we already are. Oh, so I thought Thabes, um, the city of the city of Thabes, the city of illusion where Garnet was. I actually thought that was actually part of um, that, but apparently not. Huh. I actually completely thought that was a completely different. I thought that was part of this, but apparently not. Hmm. That's actually surprising. But first off's first, let's actually use Zane and make sure he's nice and freelanced into whatever character we want him to be. And honestly, I feel like turning him into Minerva, so that would be a good idea. So 18 defense, 17 strength is always nice. There is those two snipers on the other side, but we don't need to worry too much about that one. Um, honestly, due to the fact that we do have... Um, the idea of having to get to the other side of the map due to the fact that there is the big area over here. I feel like teleporting Marth over here would be a good idea just so we can get that one chest over here. So I'm going to actually use my first turn here for Marth to actually transport him over there. So honestly, I feel like that should be a good idea. Um, first off, we probably should move Wendell since I want Lena in the spot that Wendell actually is in. So let's move Wendell over here. And then we can use Lena and just teleport Marth all the way to where we need him to be. So Marth, you are going far, and I mean far from here. And we also get to finally figure out what this thing is over here, this little blue area. Because we still have yet to figure that out. But I guess we'll figure it out once we're over here. And since we have the Falchion, we can actually fight off with those dragons now. Since that is a sword that's effective to dragons. So we actually can use that to great benefit with these Manakeets over here. So Marth is actually in a very, very nice spot for him to be in right now. So with our Falchion, let's actually first, first use of this thing. Ooh, that's a cool animation. And he does a whole backflip too. I like it. Although he didn't double there. It could be because of the fact that this guy has high speed. Yeah, he's got some decent speed. But he also did zero damage to Mars, so honestly, I feel like we should be fine. Okay, other than that, um, the mage the Manakeets over there shouldn't do too much to us. I feel like moving Kane this way should be a good idea. We do have to make our way over to the village, so one of our units is going to be staying back. It's going to be one of our flying ones. Um, Minerva's level 20, so we don't need to move her too far out, so we can have her visit this um, house over here and check it out. Hmm, a temple sits atop the mountain to the south. Deep inside a central pillar stands. In front of it, arm can be used to restore life. Yes, use it there, and you can greet a fallen friend. And honestly, we have no one dead, so we don't actually have to use that. Um, so although that is a thing we can do, um, we actually don't have to do that. So thankfully, we get to save time with that. Because, um, is honestly something we don't need to use. Although, um, I did notice one thing. Elise is actually the one that uses um. So, 
technically we couldn't even use that pedestal even if we wanted to. Actually, we could have used it to save some time with this chapter, in case anyone did go down, then we don't have to, like, go back and all. Also, wait a minute, I'm pretty sure, yeah, heavy armor can't go through mountains, right? We learned that in the Port Warren chapter, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so we're gonna make sure that we don't even think about going that way with our big guys, because those guys won't be able to do anything with that. But we do know that horseback can go in mountains. But honestly, that doesn't seem like a safe idea to run through there, so let's not even think about that. So all of our horseback units can start making their way to the right, and... Hmm... Honestly, I feel like si sitting uh, Ogma inside the mountains with Navar might be a, a good idea. Although, like, not running them through, but saving them and wait, having them wait back here might be a smart idea. So we're going to do that with them. And then we're going to keep a couple units back just so we can maybe catch this um, this little manakeet dragon, or dragon ma manakeet, whatever you want to call him, at bay because he doesn't, I don't think he would expect a flank from two sides, honestly. Um, Kata, do we really need to run Kata out anywhere? Um, maybe a little bit, just in place of kind of near these, um, snipers, so we can get rid of them early. But other than that, I'm not sure. Um, I feel like we moved everybody, I think, so I think that should be our first turn. And yep, it is. So let's end turn, and let's see how the enemies kind of react to this, because usually they act, react pretty aggressively, but... I don't know how they're going to react with all the mountains around us, so I guess we'll figure it out soon. Because if they do start moving, we can actually flank them completely, which actually might make us get through this chapter a lot quicker than it normally would be, if unless they start moving towards the mountains, which they seem to be moving towards the mountains, so it's not going to be the way I thought it would be. But these guys are actually going to start fighting Marth here, like I thought they would. So let's see how much this actually works. Two damage from him. Our falchion is effective to dragons, so we get to figure out how much damage this thing does. Apparently it's a 10 might weapon in this game, so 27 damage to guys that get some high, and I mean high, defenses. 27 damage is really good with a physical weapon. I'll take 27 damage. Wow, okay. So that means um, if Medius doesn't have high defenses, he's going to be probably 3 shot by this thing, I would think, at this point. So we're actually in a good spot here that do that being the case. And it looks like these snipers and these manikeets are going to make their way through the mountain paths. So it looks like maybe the way we were moving is actually a good idea. Oh, but wait a minute. I wanted to make my way to that treasure chest, but the, this guy didn't even attack me. Well, let's attack this um, manikeet here so we can at least open the area right here so we can grab him and then we can go over to that treasure chest and then we can start making our way to the dragon. Because I feel like we should be fine as long as we move properly, if you know what I mean. So we should be fine, I think. But it's, you never know, honestly. But down goes another dragon. And thankfully this falchion is definitely living up to his its legend. Because it's supposed to be a dragon killing weapon. And thankfully it's indeed doing that. So that's actually really good. Um, due to the fact that Zane, I think, has more defense than Kata does at this point... Yeah, so Kata should go first. So Kata, you go over here, and I'm gonna have you Silver Lance the Sniper. So as long as you Silver Lance this person, and then Zane comes in to follow up with the other Sniper, we should be perfectly fine. Actually, you took 21 damage? Really? Does he survive that? No, he doesn't. Okay, good. Okay, that could've been much worse. Okay, down goes another one of those Snipers. We need to get rid of both of them. Ooh, nothing for that level. Oof. Uh, actually, could we even get anything? I think we're maxed out. Yeah, we're actually maxed out, so... Other than defense, but I don't think our defense can go up without a item, so... I think we're actually fine there. Uh, let's see here, Zane. You have 16 speed because you're Minerva. Do you actually double this guy? No, you don't. Okay, but due to the fact that he is holding the, um... The silver... Bo, you might actually double him here, but I'm not entirely sure though, that's the problem. Um, hmm, let's try it. Might as well. There's no no point in not trying it, at least. If we double this guy and get him off the battlefield, we don't have to worry about any more, uh, any more snipers, but it looks like we don't actually knock him out here, even if we double, so... Hmm. Oh no, we, we do! Okay. 
That didn't look like it would be 18 damage, but apparently that was about 18 damage left on his HP bar, so perfect. Um, is there any reason to run all the way around? Yes, there is. There is people over there, so... And, like I said, we like to full clear maps for the most part, so... Let's make sure to run our units over to the right side so we can start dealing with the right side of this map. Okay, um... Harden, I want you to move here, since it, there no, there's no way that the mana keys are gonna double... Um, Harden, so we don't need to worry about that. They will attack his defenses based on what we know. So we don't have to worry about him going down for him having low resistances or anything like that. Even though you'd think the mage stones would attack the resistances. Which I'm surprised that the um the dragon stones don't actually attack resistance and attack a defense instead. I'm actually really surprised about that, to be completely honest. Cause honestly you would think fire would go for magic damage. And instead it doesn't, which is really surprising. I'm very, very surprised about that one. Um, let's see here. We need to actually have Minerva hold a door key due to the fact that, um, I need to trade it off to Marth soon due to the fact that, um, I did check for doors as I keep saying. So one of the things was is I made sure how many door keys we needed and we need one for the final chapter. So we need to actually grab a door key out of this, um, convoy because that would be really smart due to the fact that we are going to be dealing with a bunch of things in the next chapter. Um, there, It's a big map, as I was saying, but I don't know if there's going to be like tons of units, though. All I know is I need a door key for Marth, because where he spawns on the map, there's a door right next to him. And if we can open that early, that would just be a smart, smart thing for us to have. So just in case, let's make sure to have our door key now, just in case, because if we forget that, it's actually going to be a bad thing. Because then we have to go all the way to the one shop on the map, and the one shop has a door key. I'm not even joking. That's literally all that's in the shop. So, we do want to make sure that we have that. Okay, other than that, um, Navarre, you can start making your way over here. I'm going to actually have you pull out your silver sword due to the fact that the might on the... Killing Edge might not do anything to this Mage Stone user, so just in case, 9 damage is actually perfect, since this guy should have some decent defenses like Bantu. And he actually did... he actually missed, surprisingly. I actually thought he was going to hit me, and he, I thought he did 0 damage, actually, based on the fact that it completely missed, because I really expected him to hit me there, I'll be honest. But apparently the Mountains actually have some decent dodge chance. Did not expect that one. And actually, I thought that was... um. The unit we just moved, I thought that was actually Wendell, to be honest. I keep forgetting that Merrick's now a bishop now, and I'm so used to him being something completely else. Okay, everyone else, I guess, just follow. We can go over mountains, so we don't have to worry about all that. Um, do we have to psychic anybody? I don't think so, but let's kind of check, just in case. Just to see if anyone's low on HP. Um, I'm pretty sure, yeah, Navar dodged, so we don't need to worry about him. How about Marth? Marth is 32 of 40. 34, I mean. So he's fine, so we don't need to psychic him. So other than that, we're perfectly fine with this turn, it looks like. So let's do a nice create bookmark, since I feel like we're safe. And let's end our turn. Okay, and now we're completely flanking this army. Because now we're on the right side, the left side, and the bottom side. So we're completely, like, scissoring them off right now. And there's not really much they can do now, since now that we're kind of like on every side of the map, they literally can't do much here. Oh, here comes the bishop with the blizzard, which we already know only does 7 damage, so we don't even need to worry about him. There's only one on this map that actually can do damage to us, and that's the guy with the Balognun. And I believe that's the guy that actually just moved to our right side, where Harden is, and the rest of the cavalry army. And this guy with his fire doubled us, which, eh. Honestly, 10 damage isn't anything at this point, so honestly, we're pretty safe with the mages that aren't using these strong tomes. Oh, thankfully, we're actually using, um, well, actually, I don't think the javelin might do much, but eh, 5 damage, 5 damage, not bad, 10 damage in all. So honestly, we got something out of it. Okay, perfect. Now you're going for, it looks like Zane. Zane should be able to block this. If not, I'll be surprised, but he dodged it anyway, so doesn't even matter. And since Zane is holding the Silver Sword, that should be quite a bit of damage, 11 damage, so that should be 22 altogether, unless he crits out of nowhere. 
Yep, 22. Perfect. I'll always take that over nothing. Okay. That guy's running for his life for the stronghold to get some free HP. That Manakee's running to the left for some reason. Really? Oh, because Navarre hit him twice. And I think he's trying to get to the stronghold, but the thing is, is that guy is not going to move from the stronghold, so that guy doesn't get his free heal that he's trying to get to. It would just, honestly, he could keep trying, but I don't think the game the game's going to move that unit just so he can get a free heal. We'll see in a second if he does move, which would be really stupid of that boss. Because if Marth was in that area and that guy does move from that area, we can actually just run right off and we can actually take the, take the castle for free. But thankfully the AI is smart and it didn't do that, so let's grab him. Devil Sword. Devil Sword. Right. Uh, I'm just gonna say this now. Nope. <laughs> Oh, I'll, I'll take my turn back. Thank you very much. I do not care for Devil Swords. Um, yes, they do do some damage, as we saw in um, the one map. But I... yeah, I'm not taking that. Well, now you guys know what's in there, so if you want a Devil Sword, go grab that there. I'm, I don't want any. I Those things are kind of... I've thrown every single Devil Sword and every single Devil Axe I've gotten throughout this game. So, honestly, I don't even want to waste my turn grabbing that. If it was for something like, like, actually usable, I would've, but no. <laughs> I'm not trusting those things. Those things are death traps, and I honestly think they work the way they do in the future games, and I'm not gonna search it up, because honestly, I feel like for that, that thing, because that's not an item that's in the future ones, only the Devil Axes are. I don't remember Devil Swords being a thing, so... I have a feeling that would be the same thing as the Devil Axe if the Devil Axe is the same. So, honestly, let's just not try that. I'm just gonna be honest. Okay, Zane, I want them to get rid of the mages, honestly. The dragons should get rid of the mages as quick as possible. Because the mages are the only problem for most of our army. The Manakeets don't do much damage because of the fact that they're not made to do damage, they're made to tank and made to make us wait um, a lot longer to get further and further and further. So let's just make sure to deal with the actual problems first. Although we do have another mana keep to deal with in another second. Actually, is he a mage stone user? No, he's a fire stone. Okay. How about this one? He's a fire stone as well. Okay. That might actually be a good thing. Can one of our mages actually make their way in here? As long as they're in the mountains already. Um, nope, they can't. Okay, well, that's unfortunate. So it looks like we can't cheese into that like I wanted to. But we can run Navar in here, have Navar get rid of this guy, so get rid of one of the mana keats. And honestly, I feel like we can run Ogma up to the other mage since he can run too, since we know that the, um, the heroes can run straight into these guys, so let's just get rid of both of them. Because making sure the bishops are off the map is honestly a smart idea due to the fact that they do full damage to us. So honestly, saving... It's a, its technically a saving grace making sure these guys are... He survived. That's not what I wanted, but um, we'll still survive. It's still very good in our favor, honestly. So we're still fine no matter what happens here. Although, I would like to run a lot further than where we can right now, but there's really not much I can do there. Okay, um, I think the right side of the map is the only people that still need to move, so let's see here. Who can we move and who do we want to move? Looks like Drog might be the smartest one to... Yeah, Drog's gonna be really smart to get rid of this guy, since I do know the... Based on the last chapter, the bishops had 16 speed. And when they had the Belognon, he was able to double them. So let's just use Silver Sword and get rid of this guy for free. So honestly, I'll take a free free knockout here. And he missed completely, so we didn't take any damage from that guy. Which down goes the hardest mage on the map at the moment. Unless there's a reinforcement. But for right now, we don't know anything about that. What are you holding that you can't use? Oh, you're using... Oh, the Killing Edge that Kato was holding. Oops, I completely forgot about that. Um, 
I don't want to use the Parthia yet. I don't want to use. I want to use that on the next chapter, because we only have to get one more chapter in, and then we have 12 charges of Parthia we can use on the next chapter, which is going to be really good. And thankfully, these dragons are actually slow, so we got a free double there too. Okay, perfect. Um, let's see here. Kane, can you run on to this guy? You can. Perfect. So that means we get rid of this dragon too, because since this dragon's more than likely not going to be able to do any damage, since he, as I said, these guys are tank more of tanks than damage dealers, we shouldn't have to worry here. Let's see. Oh no, he actually did some damage. How? Oh, maybe he actually has strength. I'm not used to drag our dragons having strength, so he actually did do some damage. That's surprising. Okay, um, I wonder how much strength he had. Let's actually take a look at these guys. Maybe... No, that one's only at four, so that wouldn't be too much. Based on what I remember, um... Bantu hits like 15 strength altogether, or 18 might, without a weapon, technically. These guys hit four. How much you? Four. Hmm. Okay, so I'm guessing that guy just happened to be a lot stronger. Maybe? Hmm, strange. I do wonder what happened there. I actually expected something much different, and I got something much different there. Huh, I'll take it, honestly, because we can just run Minerva right into this guy, and he's down for the count. And actually, I didn't even notice there were strongholds over here. So yeah, he actually almost got to his free heal if he actually got the chance there. So let's see here. If, let's see if this guy somehow pierces her armor. Nope, we dodged entirely, so we don't even get to check it. Okay, well, Minerva, get rid of him. Down goes another Manikeet. The Manikeets are going down quick, too, so that's actually really good for us. Okay, only about, I think, three more. Those three, and then the boss himself, and then the sniper chasing down Marth right now, but I don't have to really worry about that guy since Marth is 20 defense, so we should be perfectly fine for him. I'm just making sure that everyone is in a nice and moving position right now. I would like to get some levels for Kiki and Bantu, but... The only way to really get levels for them is, like, really forcing um, levels into them, but the thing is, they're only six movements, so they don't get to move as much as I really would like them to. Okay, I think this guy might be able to drag, um, I think that's Harden, actually, let me make sure. Yeah, Harden should be able to maybe drag him out. Two, three, four, five, six. No, he can't. Well, he might start running towards him, but eh, it's still good, honestly. Okay, with that, end turn. And let's see how the enemy reacts to that, now that they've been completely pincered. And I'm honestly, I'm pretty sure the game didn't expect me to still have warp staff uses. I've been saving most of those. We've used them a little liberally sometimes for like some small things, but for the most part, I barely used it. I think we had two warp staffs, so 14 charges altogether. And then I think we have like five charges left, and we have the Medius chapter, which is the final one. So honestly, we're pretty good right here. Actually, I'm surprised the Manakeet didn't even attack um, Minerva there, unless he's pretty low. Oh, it's the low one. Now it makes sense. The 3 HP dragon didn't want to get hit there, and he did 11 damage. Oh, okay, so the Mage Stone dragons actually have some punch to them. Or maybe it's just because I have low defenses for certain units. Which, honestly, I didn't actually think that would be the case, because I always thought they were pretty decent on um, their stats and everything. <laughs> this thief is running to the um, treasure chest that I don't want. <laughs> um, honestly, we should start making our way over here, honestly. But I'm going to actually deal with this guy right here. If this um, archer starts chasing me down, I will get rid of him. But I really don't care about that treasure chest, so we're going to use the Merciless. And get rid of this hero completely. Okay, 28 damage. First attack we did with the Falchion did nothing to him, but Mercius just bam, dead. Bam, dead is indeed right. I like that. Okay, perfect. I'll take that any day. Okay, um, Kata, you're full on HP. I'm thinking maybe you might be able to start wailing on Zemsel. Because if we can get him off the map early, that would actually be really good. But I honestly don't know what's going to go on here. So let's see here. The first thing we want to do is if Ogma can come over here, which he can, which is really good. So Ogma, I want you to use your silver sword since you have multiple of them. So just use two of your charges and it should get rid of this Firestone user. And that should be him down since this guy should do zero to... Wow, he still did 10 damage. 
My Bantu does nothing close to that. I swear he doesn't. Hmm. Surprising. Okay then. Ooh, strength. I'll take some strength. Actually, what level are you on strength now? 16. Ooh, I'll take it. Yeah, what is Bantu at then? Because I swear Bantu does not do 11 damage. He tanks a lot, but he does not do 11 damage. Hmm. Oh, now that makes a little bit more sense. He was doing like 9, so 2 damage, but he does... He's got the 18, so they hit up to at least 20, basically, is what that's saying. Since he hits 18 strength, I believe, with the um, might of his stone, I think it gives him 16, and then plus the 2 strength, which gets up to... Oh no, it's 18 then. So yeah, 18. So yeah, it's not completely bad, but they hit up to 20, which is a lot better than his 18, because it does burst through the um, armor. It would be nice to have him have a little bit more strength, but... Honestly, what am I going to do for him? It's going to be a little bit harder to get him some levels and strength due to the fact that he has that 10% chance. Unlike Tiki, where Tiki can still get growth rates for her, for anything she needs. And sadly, she can't get that, so there's nothing really I can do there. Honestly, Silver Sword sounds like a good idea here, since I trust the Silver Sword to hit. And it also gives us the better chance of doubling, too. I don't know if some of these random dragons are going to have some higher speed than the other ones, so just in case we're going to be smart and just make sure we do do damage here. Because doing damage is a smart thing here, and making sure that we can actually hit them is honestly the best case scenario here. I think, yeah we can. Kane can run all the way over here. And actually, if you're noticing, there is one unit that is missing from our team right now. Because we can only bring 15 units. So... Instead of bringing Abel into this um, into this chapter, I ended up bringing Zane instead. Because Zane has missed out on the last two chapters. And I think Abel was on the previous chapter, I think? I could be wrong. Let's see here. Actually, no, he wasn't. Yeah, um, Abel, was, Abel wasn't on the previous chapter, I mean. So yeah, Abel wasn't on the previous chapter. Abel didn't make it to this chapter. And then, but Abel was in the chapter before that, the one where Zane couldn't participate because we had limit un uh, unit limitations to those chapters as well, which is kind of unfortunate because there's a couple units I would love to use at all times, but the game makes it so you can't just use them forever, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So, although we, I would definitely use some of my units as, at, like, all times, we can't do that all the time, so... Although, I would love to do it, but... Let's use a ground of his charge here, though. I think that might be a smart idea here, because we can drop this guy's, if we hit, and 54 damage to the boss of this chapter. And down he goes. Down goes a mighty dragon indeed. Okay, there we go. That makes things easier. Because I was going to three um, three pincer attack him with all my dragons, but that actually works out better, because now we can just go on top of this guy with his little blizzard, Make sure he's out of the picture, because this should be the rest of his HP. Really, he survived. Huh, I'm used to doing like 28 damage to these guys, but apparently not today. Huh, works for me though, at least we did a- Oh, he doubled me. Huh, I did not expect that one. Okay, I need you to come over here, Zane. And I need you to do your silver sword, since you'll do the exact same damage as Minerva. Oh, but you might miss here. Oh, but you're- Oh no, that's a silver lance, oops. I was about to say, that was a high chance of missing, but thankfully, we ended up hitting him anyways. That actually works out. Okay, um, I can't run him all the way around, but Navar, I want you to... Actually, let me think here. I want to make sure this is safe, because I don't know how much HP he has. He has 9 HP. Um, we can Psychic him, so let's do that. It's one of our last charges of it, too, so... We need to save that last charge of Psychic for something special. Because we do have the next chapter, which is the final one, so we do want to be careful with how we use this. But thankfully that will make it so Navar will be able to get rid of this guy, because he will double him. So if he misses the first one, we'll for sure get rid of him, so we don't need to worry about the HP of him after that. So perfectly down. Down goes another one of the dragons. And I think that's every single dragon on the map, I think. Let's see. Yep, that's pretty much everyone. I'm not going to chase this curate down, unless my paladins can somehow get over there. But, let's see here. Um, I don't think there's anyone else on the map that can move. Let's see here. 
Um, nope, we have Drog. Drog can still move. Okay, Drog, you just run right through that tree, I guess. And there you go. Right through the wood, right through the bark, right through everything. That's basically how this Drog likes to play. He likes running through everything. He's like Paul Bunyan. He likes chopping down trees with his... With, well, he doesn't use an axe, but he uses just his face, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Unlike Paul Bunyan. Wait, what's that sniper doing? He just walked up to me and just stood next to me. Huh? I've never seen that kind of behavior from a enemy unit before. And there is a 96 damage crit. Wow. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. You wanna know why? The reason why I think it's funny is because of the fact that um, the Devil Sword was a item that you could get from this chest. We just got a free Devil Sword from the random thief. And now we don't even have to think about the Devil Sword in the chest. Perfect. I'll definitely take that over having to chase down or go to that chest and waste a turn just getting an item that I don't want. Okay, perfect. Um, let's start moving our units so we can help Marth out down here since Marth is by himself at the moment, and this will speed up his process of making it to this castle over here. We can also get rid of this um, curate while we're at it, since he is kind of in our way. So Silver Sword should be enough to pierce this guy's armor and be enough damage for when we do double him, it should knock him out. Oh wait, Silver Lance, I mean. I keep forgetting because um, I'm so used to Minerva having multiple Silver Swords, um, that I actually expected it to be a silver sword. I probably said silver lance too anyways, to be completely honest, but I honestly I expect to use the other thing more, to be honest. Okay, let's just keep making our way through. I don't care about the sniper behind me, because Marth needs to keep moving as much as he can, so if there is any reinforcements, we can save um, a little bit of trouble and get off this map quicker. <laughs> Because the faster we get out, out of a map with um, tons of reinforcements is honestly the better case scenario, if that is the case. Okay, Harden, I need you to start making your way towards the curate that's hiding over here. So we can get this guy off the map, since we do like to clear these maps. Okay, Kane, you make your way on the left side, I think. Yeah, Kane makes his way on the left, I think. And then, I guess... Um, only thing I can think about is maybe blocking the strongholds might be a good idea. Just in case, so we can block off a little bit of any kind of reinforcements that do spawn, since usually when there's a bunch of strongholds, that means where those are spawning locations for units that are yet to be on the map. And usually they wait till like turn 8 or 7. There was one that um, they didn't spawn till turn 5, which is the turn we're on right now. So, honestly, it could be this turn that they start attacking me, which could be a problem if it happens to be the case, but I guess we could just keep moving our, um, our, sm our small army of bishops through these mountains and slowly make them get through here, because they've been trying their hardest to kind of get through here. And let's end our turn. Let's see how the enemies kind of react now, since there's really no one left on the map. So we should be perfectly fine. I think that healer healed himself. So we don't need to worry too much there. That one's running for his life from <laughs> from our boy Harden, but Harden's probably going to be able to still chase him down. Let's see here. I'm pretty sure he can run through this one tree and still kind of get in range. I think we have a javelin, so it doesn't even matter. Yeah, <laughs> we still get him. Okay, get over here, buddy. Here's a javelin. As long as we hit two, we're you're out of here. And down goes another curate. Okay, perfect. And we got a level out of it, which is really good. Skill, max HP. I'll take some skill. I think you're actually maxed out by now, right? No, you're only on 14. Hmm. I thought he was actually like 19 something. Okay, well, that's actually good at least. At least we're still getting as much skill as we possibly need. Because we are getting close to that final chapter now. Because after we get Marth up there, we're on to the final chapter of the game. And who knows what's going to happen once we get there, because honestly, anything could happen at this point. First, first, first off's first is getting rid of this sniper, though. So let's make sure he's out of the picture entirely. Okay. Whoa, he survived. Wait, he didn't get doubled. Oh, 17 speed. Did not expect that one. Okay, then. Um, Let's see here. Zane, I need you to use your... 
Oh no, we don't have a silver sword. This could be a bad idea. Okay, um, let's see here. I'm trying to think of what we can do. I think creating a bookmark here in case, because if I do mess up, I can just reload the save and then we can knock him out. Because he, he, if he does attack us, Zane will go down, I'm pretty sure. Because Zane will be doubled, I'm pretty sure, due to the fact that he's holding the Silver Lance. Because, oh, actually we don't need to worry. Down goes the one sniper we need to worry about, and down goes pretty much all the enemies on this map. Because now that we only have the Curate to deal with, the reinforcements, um, as I said, we usually don't have to worry about those. So honestly, I'll take um, I'll take our free win here. Because um, for me to carry, um, to for me completing a map is getting rid of all the normal units and not all the reinforcements. So down goes this map pretty much. Because one curate is not going to stop me from completing this. I'm just going to be honest. Okay, Kane, I want you to go here. I'm going to have you block off the other stronghold over there. Um. There is a bunch of strongholds over here, so I feel like maybe we should block these off just in case if there is any kind of spawning that could happen here. So I'm going to try and block as many of these as possible, because that will save us any kind of troubles we need to worry about. And if I block off the entrance there before the um, bishops make their way over to the side of the map, we can save them from maybe getting doubled by some nasty swordsman or... Maybe some nasty um, dragon of some sort that comes out of there. Because honestly, I have no clue what's going to happen in any of these turns. Because for all I know, we we somehow dodge a bullet and dodge the reinforcements if there is any. And if there isn't, we get lucky, basically is what I'm trying to say. So either way, I'll take whatever we can get. So first off first, since Zane is actually in range of this, we're actually going to have him transform into Minerva again. Because that'll give him all that stats again. Since that's basically how we're keeping him alive and also keeping a, another Minerva on the map. So hopefully he can stay on that stronghold and block any kind of spawn there. Oh, that was actually Kata, actually. Eh, honestly, I'll take it. Kata is also better because Kata is, although 15 defense, we have the 20 in almost all stats other than defense. And we also have maxed um, resistance as well. So honestly, that's really good. For, for Zane right there, so honestly, I'll take that over everything else. Okay, Mars still needs to make his way up here. He's almost there, though, so he's almost perfectly safe and ready to seize this castle and finally get us into Chapter 25. And let's see here, just a couple more things to block off so we don't have to worry about any kind of maybe reinforcements. There's only one other area I would think that a reinforcement could spawn from, and it's these strongholds over here. So let's block these off as fast as possible so we don't have to worry about any kind of random spawns. And although I have seen units spawn outside of strongholds, I do think that we don't have to worry. Also, if you're wondering about the secret shop on this map, I'm not going to go for it this episode because I don't have the VIP card, and I also don't think we really need it, but I believe you can get Seraph robes, talismans, boots. Boots would be kind of nice on certain units, but I'm not going to go for them. Boots would be- I'm, if I got boots, I would throw them on, on Tiki and Bantu to give them as much movement as possible since that's been their main problem is that they can't run across the map. But honestly, we really don't need it. So if you want the secret shop, it's right in that little so section right between all these mountains. And well, that's basically all you can really get there. A couple stat boosting items if you really want them. But I honestly really don't need them. We're pretty fine here. Um, the game, the game's in a difficult spot where I think it's perfectly balanced at the moment. So I don't think we really need anything because I don't want to make it too easy on me. Although it has been easy at some points. I do think where we are is perfectly on par with when we get to the final chapter. We'll be basically balanced out with the final chapter at this point. But let's see here. I feel like we're perfectly fine with where we are. We're Drong's on a stronghold, so we don't need to worry about that. And I believe we could create a bookmark here, and let's end our turn. And if nothing spawns, I'm going to put it on to um, the max speed, since I feel like our movements are perfect now. So let's do this and fast forward, times two speed, get Marth as quickly as possible over to where we need him to be, and also let's see if the secret shop actually tells you about it. 
when you don't have the VIP card. It looks like no, so that's why I couldn't see it before. And turn, just keep rushing Marth through, since the random couple turns is gonna take us a little bit just to get to here. Okay, perfect. Now that we're right next to the castle and we can seize it finally, we do need to make sure of one thing. We need to get rid of this Devil Sword. And the best way of thinking of doing that would just be... Well, <laughs> I didn't mean to do that, but I guess I could do that in between episodes. I was going to throw the door key onto Marth and then get rid of the Devil Key, or the Devil Sword. <laughs> Why am I thinking of Sora? Because <laughs> Key Swords are... Or Devil Key would be like a sword, uh, a keyblade. I've actually only played one, um, one Kingdom Hearts game talking about Sora and stuff. I always see that people want him in, um, Smash and things. Honestly, it sounds like a fun thing. I don't think he would make it, but I honestly don't know who would make it at this point. There could be a bunch of different characters. For all I know, we could get another Fire Emblem character. Although I do know people would be mad about that, I wasn't mad with getting Fire Emblem characters. I'll be honest. I definitely liked having the ability to play as Byleth in Smash Brothers, so that was actually nice to have that ability because he's got some cool weapons due to the fact that he can use an axe, he can use the bow, he can use the lance, and he can also use the actual creator sword, which is pretty cool. I like the fact that that's a thing. But with that, let's actually finally see what Medius is all about, because this is our first time seeing him as a human slash... Um, Manakee dragon transformation kind of thing because in the one time that I did meet him that was in Tokyo Mirage sessions but he was in his um the chaos dragon mirage form so we actually didn't see him as his normal form so let's actually do this hmm princeling do not think you have yet won though you dare approach me I will not surrender you will bear witness to the true power of the earth dragons Yes, come to me. I will cast you into the deepest pits of hell. And with that, chapter 25 is basically right on top of us. And good thing I created a bookmark there, because I know if I didn't create a bookmark there, I would have accidentally loaded a bookmark at the beginning of the chapter. Because it's happened before, so thankfully I saved there. So that's actually really good. Well, let's check out the final chapter, shall we? I believe it's called, um... I think I actually have the name written down somewhere, so let's see. I think it's on my little notepad because I wanted, um, I wrote down them just in case if I need to remember them later. Here we go, Chosen by Fate. That sounds like a cool chapter name. I believe that's a, um, summoning banner name as well for, um, Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon Blade of Light characters, actually, I think. I think, um, I could be wrong. Could be, um for Shadow Dragon or the Mystery of the Emblem characters, but that's actually a name that's actually what... Yeah, I'm pretty sure Summoning Banner is based off that name. Huh, that's kind of cool. But let's see here. Ooh, here we go. This chapter is looking um, scary. A little bit. So I do know where Marth actually spawns, though. Marth should spawn right here, where this door is. So that's why we wanted to have him with the door key, just in case, so we know that we can easily walk through the little area here instead of going all the way around, like if we had a bridge key. So honestly, saving time there. I think since it is a final chapter, and due to the fact that there could be a massive amount of reinforcements on this map, I don't think we'll do a full clear of this map since the actual priority of this, of this map is actually not to seize anything, it's actually to kill Medius. So, with that being the case, our main priority is not to complete the map, but to make sure Medius is down for the count. So, in the next episode, we will be finally doing the final chapter of this game and completing the series, and finally taking on Chosen by Fate and fighting off with the Chaos Dragon slash Earth Dragon, Medius. And honestly, I'm prepared. Although I'm going to be sad when we finish this game, because I've had a lot of fun with this. But I do know what my next game is, because um, I did already say what the next series for you is. It is going to be the um, series I've already recorded before the series, which is going to be the Sandman, which is um, the sequel to the um, Crooked Man series, where the 
technically not Crooked Man series, but it starts with the Crooked Man, but the Strange Man series, which is going to be pretty cool when that goes up, because there's some, there's a little bit of fun things with that series. I had a lot of fun with that one as well. Um, I even dressed up as, um, as this main, uh, the main villain in that game, um, for the final episode of that, so that's actually a pretty fun episode there too. But, um, the next series after I record this one is actually going to be Nino Kuni, and we're going to be returning to it. Although we're not going to be doing the PS3 re um, PS3 one again, we're actually going to be doing the um, technically remake or remaster that was released to the um, to Steam. I actually have all three versions, actually, if I'll be honest. I don't think there's one on PS4 or anything, but I have the Nintendo Switch release, I have the PS3 release, and the Steam release, because I ended up buying it for, um, because originally it was going to be on the Nintendo Switch, but I got a Steam card for Christmas, um, so I ended up getting a couple games. Um, one of it, which is actually going to be a game we eventually do on this channel, which is going to be um, Detroit Become Human, which is going to be pretty cool, because I've never played or seen anything from that game. So honestly, I'm going to be really happy to play that, because I heard it's really good, and I heard it's like kind of like the Walking Dead games, but your choices actually matter, and you actually get to like, actually have a story to progress through, so I'm gonna have a lot of fun with that, I think. But other than that, I don't remember what the other game was. I don't think it was anything we were gonna do for recording or anything, but I did get the Nino Kuni game on sale, which was pretty cool, so now I have the Steam release, so I'm gonna have it in full FPS and full graphics, so that's gonna be pretty cool. So I'm gonna be really happy once I get to play that, because that is one of my favorite games and I'll be honest, that's actually probably is my favorite game. So with that, thank you all for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you all in the final chapter of Fire Emblem 1, Shadow Dragon, and the Blade of Our Light. Oh, it's so close, and yet so far. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Hey boys and girls, thank you all for watching today's episode. If you liked what you saw today, please leave a like and maybe even subscribe. And hit the bell notification down below. If you guys have any kind of suggestions for games, please put that in the comments down below as well. Thank you all for watching today's episode, and keep being spooky. Peace out, guys.